In the last video, we built the Grape Ape, a YZ125 with an Athena 144 big bore kit, ported the cylinder, blue ported the engine, did some other modifications to it. Turned out freaking amazing, if you ask me. It has uh, lime green and purple, really strange color scheme, but it came together really nicely. If you haven't seen the build video, definitely check that out. The thing is trending. It's got like over 120,000 views right now. It's, it's crazy. I appreciate you guys watching that video. Now we're going to take that thing uh, ripping. We're just going to go in the field down the road, but we're going to see what it's got. Probably do a little bit of uh, testing and tuning on it, but I want to put a special product on before we go riding it. It is a really cool pr uh, product. I have it in here. We're going to do an unboxing first. Unboxing. I feel like it's been a minute since we've done any unboxings. If you guys can't tell what it is, it says it right on the box. I am super excited about this. I've been wanting one of these things forever. Nicely boxed. Ooh, this is a premium product, man. Got some tools. I think that's some extra parts. Looks like some bushings. Got, I don't know if this is the owner's manual or just like a, like a pamphlet kind of, th kind of thing. Oh man, oh, I just gave it away. Got some more stuff in here. This looks like for our cable, our cable adjustment. Another cable adjustment, I guess if you have a different. Oh, so this is for, okay, okay. So this is like depending on what kind of throttle you have, if it's threaded or if it's the kind that just floats. All right, the warrior's weapon. This is awesome, man. This really is. This is like, for me, this is a privilege, man. This is, wow. The finish on this thing is crazy. Like the precision is just awesome. See, it's got the adjustable throttle. Wow. This is, uh, this is another one of those products like, it's hard to appreciate until it's in your hand. It's just, you can feel the quality. All of the machining, you can tell cheap billet parts versus premium ones in the edges. But a lot of that, like you can't see it, you can feel it though. It's just really, really precise. Now I'm gonna go into more detail about this throttle and explain to you guys a little bit about what goes into these things and the special features that they have because there's quite a bit that goes into these. And also there is a sale going on next week that I'm gonna tell you guys about, but we're gonna wait until the end of the video for that. First, let's get this thing on the bike and see how it performs. All right, let's see how she feels with a thumb throttle. I did do a couple things to this. Um, I got the plug down here for the um, swing arm. I got this little brake, brake line stay up here. Just like little things that I, I didn't have the parts when I was finishing up the Great Ape video. Let's see. Nice. Man strange feel uh, even when I went to kick this I went to go like this to give it like a little blip of throttle just even though um, even though I'm a, a quad guy really I mean I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a quad guy but I'm usually on quads and I haven't been on a dirt bike for it's literally been years it still feels weird being on a bike using a thumb throttle it just doesn't feel natural I don't know why that is. I'm sure it'll just take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but it's so weird, because like, I mean, you're sitting like you would on a quad, but for some reason, my, my natural tendency is to twist. So I'm sure that'll go away with time. Bike sounds good, though. I also have a different shifter on here. Uh, if you guys saw the Great Bape video, I kept missing shifts. Uh, that shifter was like three quarters of an inch longer than this one. This is the OEM size. I guess the, uh, the aftermarket one that I ordered must have been, either they sent me the wrong one or I ordered the wrong one, or it was like an extended shifter, but it was like, I would say half inch to three quarters of an inch too long. And I mean, 
just that little bit makes it a little awkward to shift. I was just missing shifts and stuff. Uh, feels, I can tell already that it feels better. So we've been picking up a lot of uh, new subscribers recently. So anybody that uh, is new to the channel, I'm really not very good at riding dirt bikes. Um, I used to ride them years ago, uh, just occasionally. And I was never really terrific at riding them. And uh, like I said, I think it's been, I'm gonna say three years since I've had a bike. And I don't know that I've really ridden a bike in that time period. I think one time I rode my buddy's YZ250. Uh, so it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to, uh, and just like getting used to the feel of even just being on a bike. Because I mean, already it feels, I just don't feel quite at home on it. Like it sits higher, you know, it's just different. You're leaning differently and everything. So just bear with me. Uh, basically what I'm planning to do is there's a basin down here I'm gonna go to. And we're just gonna do some launches. I mean, we could go in like a circle, but you can't really do too much down there. Uh, but it's more, it's better than being in the yard. I'm not worried about tearing up the lawn or anything. So what I wanna do basically is the launches. Make sure that this thing gets up in the RPM, see how it pulls. And just to get some good sounds and stuff, man, because this thing really does sound good. I'll tell you what, it's, it's really noticeable just how tight this bike is. I mean, granted, it should be. I just got done building it. Um, but it just, it's a nice feel. Everything's nice and tight. All right, so I'm gonna set the camera up here. See if we can get a couple shots launching this thing. Got my little go bag here. I've got my tripod, got my jets. Uh, all the tools and stuff to change the jets if we have to do that, which hopefully we won't. Man, this thing really sounds good. And just a little about me, um, I weigh about 215 pounds, so I'm a little bit big for this bike, uh, for like speed and stuff. 125 is probably a little bit too big for this. It feels pretty good. I gotta get used to launching this. I might have to back the clutch off just a little bit. It's tight. Nothing crazy for me. The front end comes up though. Feels really good actually. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Forgive me. Forgive me, go easy on the comment section, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these, these tires bite. The front end wants to come right up. I thought I would get a little bit of tire spin there, but man, right up in the air. These are those um, Tusk tires, the T35 MX. Pretty heavy duty. I got 18s in the back, 21s in the front. Uh, this is basically, it's, I made it for trails. I think we're on the money with the jetting. And I wouldn't say it's gutless down low. <laughs> I know a lot of people that are like, dude, a 125 has zero balls down low. It's definitely not, <laughs> it ain't no 450, but uh, it's not like gutless, you know what I mean? If you're, as long as you're in the right RPM, and this is a 144 if anybody doesn't know. Um, I ported this, uh, blueprinted the engine and stuff. I'm just surprised, I guess, uh, that a little 144 can, can move me around this well. <laughs> Dude, this thing is awesome. 
this is a riot, dude. This is a lot of fun to ride. I'm telling you, give me like one or two days on the trails and I'll be much more comfortable on this thing. Actually be able to see what it can do. But I can tell, man, I'm really gonna enjoy this bike. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> front end comes up in third gear if you're in the upper RPMs. It feels really, really healthy though, dude. Any bike guys that have tips for me, dude, put it in the comments below because <laughs> I'm terrible at riding this thing. just sounds so good <laughs> oh man i love two strokes dude it looks weird with a thumb throttle it's still like getting me every time i look at it i'm like wait a second what is that <laughs> This thing pulls really good, dude. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the sound or the experience or a combination of the two, but this bike just like gives you smiles, man. <laughs> very, very nice. Guys, let me know in the comment section below, does it sound healthy? Does it rev? I want to hear from the 125 guys. Does it sound like it's revving high enough? It sounds good to me, but the two strokes I'm used to listening to are Usually 250, 250 and up, they don't rev quite as high as a 125. I know they make a very unique sound. It's been quite a while since I've um, been on, <clears throat> or even around, um, a very small bore two-stroke. What's up, man? I like your bike. Thanks, dude. I watch your YouTube. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Well, that was cool. Uh, a subscriber just stopped by. Lives in the neighborhood. Never even knew it. Had a uh, KX 250F. I just went, see that? I'm going to twist. Still not used to this thumb throttle. <laughs> oh man, the back end was went sideways a little bit there. This thing definitely passes the certified fun test. My camera just died, my GoPro. So we're just gonna head back to the garage. This is definitely one of those things though where you would, if you get a more experienced rider on it, you would be able to see the full potential of this thing. But the important question is, how much power do you think this thing makes? Certified ass dyno technician here. Let's get into it. So before the mods today, we were at a consistent zero horsepower all the way across the board because the bike was in a million pieces. We'll give it a little bit at the end so it doesn't have to feel bad. After the modifications, our certified ass dyno technician observed a very low amount of power in the beginning of the RPM range. Ballus, if you will, 
then with a steep increase of horsepower towards the upper RPM range, reaching an impressive 46 horsepower, then having a sudden and steep drop off as it gets into the over rev range. Now with a more experienced rider, we could have easily doubled this horsepower, resulting in over 90 horsepower from a single cylinder, 144 cc. You can see the vast improvement over what we had before. We also noted that lowering the gear ratio may have improved the power delivery for our heavier rider. And that is your official ass time. All right, so now that we know this thing works, actually I'm filming this before I take it out riding, so hopefully it didn't blow up. But now I'm just, I got everything taken apart uh, so you guys can see the guts of this thing. I want you guys to see, you know, what goes into these things. So here's the throttle body. You'll notice there's a number on the inside here. That's actually a VIN number. Each and every one of these things comes with their own unique identity number. So this 1900 1019, this is my actual throttle. That That's just really cool, man. That that sets, up, sets it apart, not just from other throttles, but from other products. I mean, not too many products come with their own identity number. And you'll see on the throttle cover, they've got that same number there. So it makes it very unique to whoever buys it. These are also made out of 7075 aluminum. That is a super durable aluminum. They're CNC machined. And the coating on this is called diamondizing. So, or diamondized coating, but it, the process I think believe is called diamondizing. So you're probably familiar with anodizing. This is a step beyond that. From what I understand, that's a military process. And I don't think any other companies in the industry use that process. It's that durable. It's more expensive to do that coating, but it's gonna last you longer. Uh, but that's just another one of those things that makes this a super premium product. Now you'll also notice in here, there are needle bearings. So there's actually, if you guys can see, there's two needle bearings in there. I don't believe there's any other thumb throttles on the market that have that. There's usually some kind of like plastic or Delrin bushing in there, which, you know, it, it's it's eventually going to wear away and you will feel slop in it, like almost across the board. Even if you get a brand new thumb throttle, you'll feel a little bit of slop and play in there. It's just one of those things, man. If you don't have bearings, you, you can't get that super tight action. And the reason manufacturers don't use it is because it's expensive to make. They have built-in seals in these bearings, so they're going to keep out you know, sand, dust, grit, and grime, and make these bearings last as long as they possibly can. You're also gonna wanna maintain these. You always wanna lubricate any kind of, any anything that's got uh, motion and friction. You wanna, or roller bearings, same thing. Uh, ball bearings, they all need lubrication. Of course, those are replaceable if for some reason they are to wear out. Uh, so that's another one of those things where, uh, you know, a, a traditional throttle, the body may wear out. This, you get the bearings that are replaceable. Now also to go with the body, there are adapters. This will extend in case you have a really long throttle cable. And then there's also this other adapter for, you know, if you've got a, a floating cable, like, uh, I don't know if that's really what it's called. I think it's called like a floating cable. Uh, it doesn't thread in, it just sits in there. I believe the Predator was like that. You've got this adapter here. So it's in an effort to make this thing as universal as possible. It can fit quads and it can fit dirt bikes. And now for the actual thumb portion, man, what a premium piece. You really can't appreciate this until you get one. This is an adjustable thumb throttle. It's adjustable in two ways. So you have your post right here that goes in the throttle body. Actually, I believe it goes this way. Um, and then this is slides on here and you've got set screws on it. So you can lock this into position and you can adjust it up or down. So it's gonna be tailored basically to your thumb, your your hand size. So if you have like uh, smaller hands or larger hands, uh, some people have like like real long fingers. It, you can make it the way that you like or your riding style. And then it's also adjustable. It pulls down like this, and there's a little uh, pin in there. You can adjust it forward and back. So you have three different positions. That's uh, furthest forward, middle, and back. Now that may seem kind of silly and it's not, it, when I uh, saw like pictures and stuff and videos, I wasn't sure, you know, if that would be sturdy, but it's, it's, it's a very strong tension. That's not going to come out while you're riding or anything. But what's nice is with the factory edition, if you are afraid of that, there's a set screw right here so you can lock it into position. You know, if you're doing long trail rides and you're going to be sitting a lot, you might want to set the throttle one step further away. Like let's say you're standing, your position, your hand might be like this. And when you sit, your hand comes down like this and you have a little bit more actuation with your thumb, a little bit more range. So that's what's nice is on the fly. You know, if you get to that sitting portion, you can set it out like this. And if you're standing up riding aggressively, you might want to move it a little bit closer. Or if you're riding a, a much faster section and you're going to be in the upper RPM range, it sucks when you have to like really, you know, go, go to the full RPM range and you're stretching your thumb out, especially if you're standing, that's hard on your wrist. So if you're going to be in a section where you're going a lot faster, you know, set it to the further forward, for, furthest forward position so that you're grabbing the throttle further out instead of grabbing it here and you really have to extend it. Let's say, let's say, oh, let's say uh, we'll do it with the adjustment. Like let's say, so instead of grabbing the throttle here and really having to push it, 
you can actually bring it closer to you so you don't have to press quite as far. So it's just a, a nice adjustability thing. You're not gonna find that on any other throttles. I just think that's super unique, super cool. And it also comes with three Allen wrenches. Uh, I'm gonna be using my T-handles because I'm a snob, but it does come with the stuff to get the job done. I'm gonna assemble this thing on the bench just to show you guys how this works, but typically you'd put the throttle body housing on first and then um, you know build it from there. First thing you wanna do is lube up your bearings. Now, like I said, you can use uh, like any kind of lube that of your choosing, but uh, Robert likes to use chain lube. I'm gonna use some bearing grease and I'm gonna fish it in there with a screwdriver and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try my best to pack it. It's really difficult though, because this is a very small application. Now we've got a little, I believe this is a copper washer that slides in place and it's gonna, but there's a nice little recessment fits right in there. We have these set screws here. You wanna make sure they're backed out enough so that it can fit on your post. And I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on all of these. Here's our post. There is a little ring on the bottom here. That's gonna stop this from sliding off if for some reason your set screws do back out. So that's gonna come through the bottom like so. That's a nice snug fit. Now we'll push this into our bearing. Go easy with this, because you don't wanna roll the lip of your seal. Man, that's nice. You've got the actuation arm. You can see a little square portion here. You want this facing up like so. Clip that in place. Goes down like that. And then we've got another brass bushing up top. It's tapered to fit our flat top screw. Now, typically you would put your cable in before you install this, but like since we're doing it on the bench, I just set it like so. Put your gasket in place. And then of course, our clamp. This would have already been installed if we had put the throttle body on the machine first. And it's as easy as that. And then of course you can do your adjustments uh, where you want it to sit this way. And you can also do the adjustment up and down as well. Really nice throttle. Now, if you're looking to get yourself an Hermosi thumb throttle, the price is hefty, I'm not gonna lie. But now that you've seen all the features, there is justification for it, man. You can see all of the time and effort that Robert puts into these things and just the quality, it's there, man. The original thumb throttle is gonna be $219. And then to get the factory edition like this one, which is gonna give you a little bit more adjustability, the ability to lock the thumb throttle in position, you're also gonna get a lifetime warranty with this. Uh, this one's gonna come in at 289. Now, if you're looking to pick one of these things up, wait a couple days because Next Wednesday, the 24th, Ramosi Throttles is doing a promo on these things. You're going to get 25% off. That sale is going to run until December 6th. You can pick them up on Ramosi's website. I will have that linked in the description below. If you guys are looking to support fellow YouTuber Pete Hager, you can pick them up on his website as well. It's going to cost you the same on either one. You can get those at PeteHager.com. And last but not least, I'll give you guys an update on the 400EX. That is the next video, let's hope, uh, the next project that we're doing. I'm planning to do it just like the Great Ape, one long video from start to finish. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick snippet of that right now. All right, guys, check it out. Here's the 400. I have been doing a ton of work to this thing. It's going to be hard to really tell uh, exactly the transformation that this has gone through until you watch the video because there's a lot of like, well, you get to see it before and all. Uh, the A-arms, I cleaned them up. These cleaned up really nicely. The frame I've been cleaning up, like up here, we had those tags. I took those off because they were just torn and tattered. They, there was no bringing them back to life. Uh, cleaned that up really nice. It, that just cleaned everything up. Like these, this wasn't even bolted on. I, I bolted that in place, cleaned the brake lines, put these little brake line stays on just to clean up the look of everything. The steering stem, this had obviously rolled at some point in time. If I can get this gas tank to just stay. Uh, but yeah, this had rolled. So I straightened the frame by putting a jack. I had to take the carburetor and stuff off. I put a jack up against the frame. You'll see it in the video. Press that forward. Uh, some of these welds were cracked. I re-welded it. Put some reinforcing welds in here, just little tiny ones, and welded this side too. Engine is in entirely done. Got the 426 kit on there from BP Racing. Ported the engine. Got my little logo on there. It's a pretty aggressive port. I, I'm, I'm really excited to see how that works out. Got the stage three hot cam in there. Uh, can't talk about the engine too much. You'll have to wait for the video for that. Got the brand new HMF from Lion Parts on there. That thing is clean. The swing arm, this is what I'm gonna be doing later. I'm gonna clean that up. I think I can make that look just as good as the A arms. And then the axle, I'm gonna refinish, make that look nice. So basically like this portion back here, I haven't touched yet. Uh, so I'm gonna take care of that. 
Got a brand new battery in there. Any parts that were missing, got all new OEM stuff on there. A carburetor from Zoom Zoom, that is an OEM replica carb. You can see the top end is entirely new, literally from here up. Blueprinted everything, uh, ported the head. It's gonna be freaking sweet. Got my hour meter on there. Cleaned up the wire harness, uh, just a lot of stuff has been going in, like little, little parts like this, refinishing them. This was actually stuck onto the plastic. I haven't tightened that down yet. Uh, but that was, this was stuck on the plastic. The bolt that goes through there was stripped and it was just spinning. It wouldn't come out. And then over here, working on the shocks. I've cleaned these. They cleaned up really, really nice. And I'm working on polishing, making these all nice and clean, but I'm in the midst of, pro of doing that. You can see like down here, not quite done yet. And I'm gonna clean these up. I'm either gonna make these like a brushed color or I'll polish them up. I might polish them, that, that could look actually pretty sweet. And then what I'm doing is, I'm, I've got these clamps coming in the mail to hold them kind of like that. It's gonna make it look like a piggyback instead of the remote reservoir. Uh, that will be here Monday. So that's why the video is a little bit delayed. I have a couple parts that I'm waiting on. <laughs> Another thing is, I went to put these pegs on, I refinished them and everything, redid the, the shifter, the foot brake, and look at this, dude. They're both right side pegs. And what's funny is the left side peg is the one that I needed to be replaced. Go figure. Uh, but these are actually 450R pegs. Uh, it's an upgrade over the 400EX. So I ordered another set of pegs. Those I think will be here tomorrow, luckily. Uh, the steering stem, if you guys remember that was bent. Dude, literally, I mean, even I'm surprised how straight that came out. That uh, I did that in the 12 ton press over there really worked out great. I uh, got the DRWK saver I still have to put on there yet, refinished the uh, clamps up there, refinished all this stuff, just trying to make it look as clean as possible. It's not a total restoration, but you know, I want it to look nice. Uh, the Nerf bars, I refinished those. These were really cruddy. Um, they came out really nice and I have a new set of nets on the way. So that's the deal with the 400. There's a, just a couple more things. I could finish this in like a day, but I have to wait for those parts. So uh, I believe the parts will be here any day now. So this video should be up next week. So there you have it guys. I will see you in the next video. Please consider hitting that thumbs up button if you enjoy these videos. Also consider subscribing if you wanna see more content like this. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there's also the option to join. Love all you guys. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.